Don, can we just go through some of the outstanding things of the week? Any more on Josh Jenkins and Mitch, Go Mitch McGovern that you can tell us? Uh, not much more on Josh. Josh is starting to get going again now. Is Thankfully, we uh, we got to the bottom of uh, what was causing the problem, which was his, the rib cartilage stuff. So um, he had some running this morning. He'll run again tomorrow, and we'll try and build him up for next week. Uh, with Mitch, uh, it looks like it's an eight eight plus sort of week injury. Um, they're just running through some uh, some tests and, and seeing some specialists to decide the best course of action. So uh, we'll let you know more when when we we cross that. For those of us who aren't medically trained, what does rib cartilage mean? Is it the, was the bruising or the damage or a rib or well, I think it's in the. What I understand, as a, from a layman's viewpoint, it's in the just in the cartilage beneath the ribs there, in terms of some uh, some damage in there. Which, you know, again, the thoracic specialist said, well, that's what was causing the issue. So we've got to let that settle. As I said, he's starting to run now, and look, we'd, we'd be hopeful for next week. So the old issue of whether it was a bruise or a crack's out of the way doesn't really make any difference. It's the cartilage stuff, yeah. How's Jake? He looked like he pointed to his hamstring, did a couple of run-throughs, and had a chat with you, then walked off. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Nothing to it. No. I'm going to speak with Eddie this week and the fallout from, from the showdown. Oh, look, we, we've sort of supported Eddie in a number of ways this week. And, um, you know, again, it's one of those unfortunate things and incidents that happened. And I think a lot's been said about during the week. And it's really a, um, you know, from Eddie's viewpoint, he's now looking forward to playing. Um, you know, he's, uh, uh, he's in a good headspace. On Eddie Betts, he said on radio he's a bit sore yesterday. How's he travelling? Ah, oh, he's good. He was good. He was a bit sore going into the game last week. Um, but he, he's fine now. He's, uh, we had a seven-day break, which has given him a chance to freshen up. He said on radio, like yesterday, I think it was, that he still had that soreness. Do you take any extra provisions or do anything differently to manage that? No, nah, look, he's a senior player. He's played, he's played enough footy. It's just him you know, managing. As I said last week, he was a little bit sore um, going into the game, um, but he pulled, up, he pulled up fine and he's reported a lot better this week. So um, I expect he'll be ready to go again tomorrow night. Oh, you got that. Don, in terms of uh, great start, your football team gets everything they everyone prays for the, to be recognised, to be put up as the pace centre. How do you think they'll handle that environment, that expectation, that demand that they keep building on that? Yeah, well, for us, nothing's really changed. I mean, you're right. We've had, you know, we've won the three games, which is which is ideally what you'd want at the start of the season. But um, we've identified areas we want to keep getting better and keep improving on. So. For us, it's uh, it's the first sort of the first step in a long season, and um, as positive a step that is, we understand that winning games of footy in this comp are, are, is difficult, and we're going to keep getting better to, to keep winning. So um, we're certainly not sitting here going, "Great start, we're happy with ourselves and happy with our lot in life." We're we're looking to strive to keep getting better, and, and we know there's areas we can keep working on. Is this a group that you sense actually enjoys that expectation? There are those that get weighed down yeah. by it, and those that actually really crave it and build from it. Well, the expectation is really external, I and mean, for us, we we prepare each week. As I've said a number of times, we we prepare, and and plan and get ready to play to, to try and win games of footy, and that really doesn't change, um, regardless of what the ladder says, regard, regardless of what the results are. We we go through a, a very similar process, um, and our players go through it as well, just to, you know, because we we look forward to the challenge of playing games of footy. And so you don't they get distracted. You don't no. feel they've got, they could isolate themselves. From no, I think that I think they can. And I think certainly from internally, our messaging, which is you know, again, we talk about the internal and the external, um, and we can't stop people writing opinion about where they might project or where their opinion might sit as to where we might may finish. That's the furthest thing from our mind. We're focused on Essen and tomorrow night as another opportunity to take you know to win another game of footy. And what, do you, what are you doing with that attack in your thinking every time you have to move another you know piece on your puzzle board there is have you got a handle on what you want to do with that attack if you keep getting hits there? Uh, not really. We've, we, we we're fortunate this week we've been back in Troy who you know, played played really well first game and was probably unlucky the unlucky player to miss out when, when Tex came back in. Um, pleasingly he continued his form last week and played well in the Sandfall, which you know again we bring a guy in who's in good form, who's had a good pre season um, and is ready to perform and that's you know really what we'll continue to do. We continue to promote our guys within the Sandfall to play well play the way we want to play um, and give themselves every chance to be ready to go when an opportunity presents and you know, Troy gets that opportunity this week which is which is great for him. Without McGovern and Jenkins you probably can't rely on contested marking as much uh, or bombing it long. Do you change the preparation much in that, the game plan a little bit? No, I would like to think the game plan is flexible enough to you know accommodate them. Obviously against Hawthorne two weeks ago we lost Josh early and had to restructure there. Um, and we're able to, to find a way. Um, each game will throw something different up. We, we want to make sure, fundamentally, we've got 
the right players in the right form, um, being able to play the right roles and um, each game will be different. So some games like last week was a highly contested game. I don't know what tomorrow night will be. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll address that as we as we confront it. And on that role changing, Andy Elton's probably been one of the few good stories of the year so far. What kind of role do you expect him to play against Essendon? Yeah, he'll play a similar role that he's played previous weeks. I mean, he gives us, you know, it's, it's interesting. In the last couple of weeks, he's added another string to his bow. I think he's historically been able to do that, play forward. Um, so being able to play forward, back, and now in the ruck, um, and he's just you can see in the way he's playing. Um, as I said, it's a credit to his, his preparation and the way he went about his pre-season. But he's just loving playing the game, and it's great to see. Um, you know, and his performance is reflecting it. Tom, what about Sam Jacobs? How are you measuring how much time he can do? And particularly after a game like last week, mm. do you rethink one, two, Ruckman and that sort of debate? Oh, that's thrown around a little bit, but probably more so on what's the best structure for the team overall. Um, with Source, he's always played high minutes. That's, that's generally how he's played his best footy as well. Um, so for him to, to take the lion's share of the, the, the ruck load is not, is not unusual. Um, and he's been, as I said, against uh, Hawthorne two weeks ago. He was good. It was a good battle last week against Ryder. And, you know, he gets another challenge again tomorrow night against Lewenberger, who's been in some good form. But is there a, a red flag at any point about wearing him for too long? Uh, not really. Not really. I mean, that's it's round four. Um, I think there's sort of bridges we cross later down the track and see how we're going. Again, we communicate with all our players as to, to how they're travelling. Um, and, you know, this game each week throws up different things. And, you know, as you said, as I said with Eddie last week, he was a little bit sore coming in. You know, this week it could be someone different, but that's just the, the nature of the game, which is why it's so relentless, and we've just got to make sure we keep communicating with players and understanding how they're, how they're travelling, how they're feeling, both physically and mentally. What have you taken note of Essendon, particularly with the new talent they've got out there? Yeah, well, it's a, it, I, mean, I think people at the start of the year were saying a bit of an unknown. I think there's a bit more known about them now. Um, you know, they had some good wins uh, against uh, Hawthorne and obviously Brisbane, the first two, and then in a wet game last, night, uh, last week, we were beaten. So... There's a lot of quality on the field. Um, you look through their, their lines, they've got a lot of quality players out there and they're playing some good footy. So um, we, we've obviously scouted them like we do each week and um, we're prepared to, to face what we, you know, what we know is a, is a good side. Bit of a luxury then, Don, uh, just going back to Andy. I mean, you get Jack Kelly and Jake Lee when they both slot back in, all of a sudden you're crammed down the back and what sort of luxury is it to be able to throw Andy forward? Yeah, well, that's just a benefit of his flexibility. I mean, I guess Jake coming back last week probably allowed that and probably rebalanced us a little bit down back. Um, but that can that can change. So it's a, it's a good, good position to be in. But again, as I said up front, we wanted to build some flexibility to our side and some of that will be forced through what happens on the field and some of it will be through us exploring the opportunity to, to try and get better, which is the other component that allows us to do. How do players respond to that? If you're a traditional backman your whole career and you draft as a backman, and how do they respond to now you're going to play forward for a couple of weeks? Well, Andy's responded really well. I can only really speak on behalf of Andy you know, on, on his situation, and he's responded, as I said before, really well. And he's played forward before, so it's not unfamiliar to him. Um, but he's yeah, you know, he's a smart player, he's an experienced player, he's got great leadership, and he's you know he's relished that opportunity and role. So, you know, again, hopefully he can do the job again tomorrow night. Don, is there anything from the showdown last week that has you? wanting to see something different this week from your group? Oh, look, I was really proud of the guys last week in terms of our... It was a, it was a hot game, it was a contested game and, and I thought our guys really performed well in that space. Probably the ability to back that up. Um, you know, for us, it's, it's you know, like I said, we're, we want to keep improving and to keep improving, you've got to continue to do it and, um, you know, that's a, another good challenge for us tomorrow night. On the uh, issue of the day, you've trained today, but have you been happy to play it on Good Friday? Are you in that debate oh, as to what this day should be about? I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. I haven't really considered it. I mean, it's a decision really the AFL decide whether, where they want the fixture.